Welcome to Sage Leaf Group Tutorials. This is Kevin Taylor here. This channel is where we explore and teach basic techniques and skills in Revit. In my previous tutorial, I explained how to import drafting views or sheets into a project. Now that we have a drafting views in this project, I'm going to show you how to modify them using detail components. So I'm going to take this view, for instance. In my last project, I I did a slab on grade floor, but for this next one, we're going to use floor joists um, like we normally do. And so this detail isn't adequately expressing what will be happening. So I'm going to start by getting rid of what I don't need. Okay, so what you see here is a detail, detailed item. So the way that these work is you go under Annotate, and then Component, and click Detail Component. With the Detail Components, there's a lot of different options of what there is. And these are all preloaded from ones that we've done in the past. So when you select a detail component, you come over to the type of properties, select the down arrow, and you've got a whole list. Um, in Revit 2016, they've created a search feature that wasn't there in 15, so if you're using 15, you won't have this option, but in 16 or 17, you, you do. Um, so I'm actually just looking for a, a TJI. Let's see if I've got one of those. I don't. There you go, wood eye joist. So you've got section, which looks like that if we were cutting this in section, but for this instance, well, we are cutting it in section, but for this instance, it won't be a section cut of the eye joist, it'll be the side profile. So I'm just going to do 1 and 3 quarters by 11 and 7 eighths. Now this is a line based component. So when you click, Wherever you drag, it'll show the side of it. So we're going to have to pull this up. Then all these are also line-based detail components. Keep all that the same. And then with this brake line, you can bring it to the front. It'll cover everything up, keep it nice and clean. Now with the jib, it's going to be up here. And then Align those two together. Actually, align it with this edge of the wall. There you go. So then we'll have the TJIs resting on that. Then we could add another detail component of probably an OVL. So that way you've got a rim joist there. There you go, you've got a rim joist going around. Um, let me pull this text. Up here, oops. Yes. Chipboard there. Pull this brake line up here. Bring that to the front. We're going to use some. I just usually indicate plywood, although realistically they're going to use OSB most likely for the subfloor. Chip on down. Okay, got the pressure treated sole plate right there. So here's one way of drawing up the floors. And then for text notes, usually I usually try to be pretty picky with these. So if it's on the left side I like them to be right justified. If the text is on the left of what it's pointing to, then it should be right justified. And if it's on the right, going to the left, then it should be left justified. And in Revit, these will always line up like such. The leaders, I like to make sure those are all the same length as well. Those are, will also auto-connect. Um, there's some instances where you can make it, make them different lengths, but 
a general rule, rule is to make them look presentable, easy to read. So pull this on up. And if you can keep as many text notes on one side as you can, that's ideal. So for this one, I'm probably going to bring it over, switch the justification, line it up there. And then we'll need to add text note for the OSB, three quarter inch OSB. Make sure those are lined up. Pull it over if you need. And delete the solid fill. It's going to come clear over to the edge. We'll also need to add a 2x6 section cut. Oops, didn't select it. Sometimes it does that. Rotate that onto the side. Go. And insulation, the shortcut for that is IN. You draw that. You either change the size of it after you draw it or before, whichever. If you change it before, then it'll change the preset. To whatever you change it to. Bring this to the front. Then we'll also want to put some 10 inch insulation probably right in here. And they usually tie that up with a net. I want to call that out. Uh, also, shortcuts DC is the shortcut for detail component, if you need a detail component. And then TX is a shortcut for text. So I'm going to actually draw one more right up here. Call this R30 uh, installation. Move this up a little bit. Move this one up. We don't get too crowded down there. So with this, I'm going to adjust these to make them so they're not converging so closely. While I do this, I like to just try to keep things as clean as I can. For this, the reason I'm doing I'm okay with having text on both sides is because we do have this blank space here and this blank space up here. But if I didn't, I'd want to keep it all consistent and on one side. And then we'll change the siding material to whatever you're, you're going to be using. That's a brief synopsis of how to do detail components and how to keep things lined up and looking nicer. If there is a tool or skill in Revit that you would like to see demonstrated, please leave a comment below.